This past week, some crazy things happened that just made me think I'm living in communist China with the great firewall of China around me. Who would ever think that this sort of thing would happen in America? The great firewall of America. Apparently, we're just as easily controlled and no one says a word but me. In this video, I'll tell you about the specifics of what happened last week where parts of the internet's encrypted traffic were throttled by parties unknown. Though there aren't many parties to choose from, I'll give you a list later on since it has to be someone on the short list. Exactly what the motive is or why they stopped doing it is the cause for a lot of speculation. Was there a secret executive order? Was this just done for business economic reasons? Or is this at the behest of the Five Eyes three-letter agencies? And some of the potential reasons are plenty scary. This is a war on privacy, folks. Because the ISPs and backbone providers that did the throttling specifically targeted those people who are trying to protect themselves using encryption and IP address obfuscation services like VPNs. It's an outrageous act and left me with a bad taste of what can happen in America. This already happens in other countries, but here? Anyway, let's talk about this in detail including the specifics of the event and why they may have done this. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and last I looked, I'm now the top tech guy on that platform. Just for insurance in case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. I have a VPN service, Bytes VPN. I also have a Brax router, which is a VPN and Tor routing device. This video is not intended to promote my products, but of course, I made them because we privacy minded folks need them. And if you're already a subscriber of my VPN, please support us in the fight for freedom by continuing your subscriptions in this tough time ahead. If you're interested in them, you can find them on the store on my app, BraxMe. The link is in the description. We use VPNs or Tor not because we're criminals with something to hide, but because we just want to be left alone. We want to be free to engage in enterprise and our interests without third parties tracking us or profiling us. It's not really much more than saying we want the windows to our house closed when we want them to be closed. But apparently someone decided that we don't even have a right to be left alone and get privacy. A new presidency just started in the USA and within days of that, starting on February 2, we started to notice a complete shutdown of VPN services. Nothing else we noticed was affected, just the VPN, though it is possible that Tor and other services were affected too. At first, to be honest, I blamed the typical network problem, so I reached out to my data center because I could see packet losses, but not at the level of the complete shutdown that was apparent to me then. I even had the problem escalated because I couldn't figure out what the cause was. We do the usual testing of network issues using tools like MTR and iPerf on Linux. Communications between my servers were at 500 megabits per second, Traffic between servers, even between different ISPs, were 400 to 500 megabits per second. So the internet backbone was fast, no issue. I actually blamed my ISP for the problem, which happened to be Linode, and told them that there's a problem with their network routes and that they need to look at shifting routes. There was no specific issue at the Linode data centers themselves. But it turned out later on that Linode had no visibility into the problem themselves and that they had nothing to do with the slowdown. Anyway, Linode's network operations center got involved with me and no specific issue was found. Since I had complaining clients, I just decided I've had it. And then we set up new servers at a new data center, moving our servers out of Linode. And lo and behold, the slowdown was exactly the same. It was crazy. And that's when I realized that it was a total throttling on the VPN network. And I'll explain in detail what the evil players were doing and what we discovered.
Most VPNs use port 1194 by default. So last week, any VPN caught using port 1194 was basically shut down from February 2 to February 5. And I moved the port to 443 on February 5 and the speed went back to normal speed again. By Friday afternoon, the big carriers were at it again. This time they blocked VPNs on port 443, which is the same port as HTTPS. At that point, I got so angry and that was the subject of my live stream last Friday. By the way, in order to block this port 443, it means that a different toolset was being deployed and it is something to fear. HTTPS traffic, which is the main traffic to websites, is also port 443. They'd have to distinguish VPN traffic from normal HTTPS traffic. And that's when I realized that they were using something called deep packet inspection to examine traffic and basically firewall or throttle what they didn't like, which was specifically VPN traffic. This was nationwide in the USA. I run a VPN service and my service is located in many cities worldwide. It didn't matter which one we used in the USA. If you used a USA server, it was slow. If you used an international server, it was faster. Anyway, by Friday, I had changed from using port 443 to something else once again, and we circumvented the problem. Then by late Friday, the throttling just stopped. On Saturday morning, February 6, VPNs were being slowed down again, but a little differently. And that's when I discovered that a different approach was being taken and the throttling was being done at the ISP level. You know, like Charter, Spectrum, Comcast, and so on. Any national throttling stopped. The local throttling stopped in the afternoon and then the next day on Super Bowl Sunday, it was repeated again. And once again, throttling stopped in the afternoon. This week, it's quiet, no unusual activities being detected, and any throttling of port 1194 and port 443 is no longer happening. So that's a summary of the events as I know it. I have many users, of course, of the VPN that have been online testers, and I have been able to get real-time feedback from them in multiple locations at once. First, let me get a little techie here for those that understand networks. But if you're not a techie, don't let this scare you because I have many big picture questions that I want answers to later on. Let's examine the technical details of what I think was happening. If some insider, by the way, knows exactly what went on, please contact me. In the meantime, I will speculate based on my own understanding and my own testing. The first throttling of port 1194 occurred around early February 2. What is unusual about how the throttling was done is that if you do a speed test while on a VPN, the download speed seemed normal, but the upload speed was at zero. And the speed tests were giving socket errors on the upload. In hindsight, I can understand now what was happening. One of the ways traffic can be disrupted in countries like China is by using deep packet inspection. Basically, it's a router that takes incoming traffic and then instead of just directing traffic based on an IP address, this device will examine each packet and look for a signature, something that tells it that it is using the OpenVPN protocol, which is the standard protocol used by VPN providers. Also, they can do this by port number since most traffic on VPNs prior to this week, prior to last week, has been on port 1194 and port 443. So the deep packet inspection router will then hand off traffic that they filter out and push it off somewhere or just terminate the traffic. This is why we were getting zero on the upload. Now, this is interesting to understand because the way a VPN works, a client connects to the VPN server on port 1194 with an encrypted tunnel. Then the VPN server acts like the client. So past the VPN server, the traffic looks normal and cannot be distinguished from non-VPN traffic. Port 1194 is only applicable on the client upload side of the VPN server. The VPN server pushes the request out like a normal user. Then whatever the website returns is funneled back on the tunnel, but the route back does not use port 1194. Let me explain this again, something to understand. Computers talk to each other on the internet using ports. While a client talks to the VPN server at port 1194, for example, the client listens on a completely different port on the way back. 
there are 64,000 ports available on each internet connection. The port on the return is randomly selected by the client computer. So it is not easy to determine where the traffic will come back to since the only identifier of port 1194 is on the upload side to the VPN server. The traffic pattern for my normal ISP is a 10 to 1 ratio of upload to download. So if your download speed is 100 megabits per second, your upload speed is typically capped at 10 megabits per second. From a residential ISP like Chartered Spectrum or Comcast, you will not get more than their capped upload speed. And I tested this. I did an iPerf test between my VPN server and my local Linux computer, and the speed for me was 4 megabits per second on the upload. It was fine, even during the time of the disruption. Yet upload using the VPN on port 1194 was zero. You see the traffic identified as port 1194 is very small in comparison to the rest of the network. When you visit a website, the upload traffic would be your clicks on a website or app, which isn't much. But if the website server never gets your responses, the effect on traffic is amplified since a small throttle results in a large reduction in traffic coming back from the VPN. The traffic coming back from VPNs is stopped completely since, of course, websites and apps will not react without any user input. This is something interesting about deep packet inspection. It can't really be done on downloaded traffic since that traffic is too big, but it can be done on uploaded traffic which uses known ports and is a significantly smaller data chunk. So a deep packet inspection may know its return traffic also known as SYN traffic, but not necessarily who it came from. Thus, the way to do deep packet inspection is exactly how they do this. Block known ports and examine the traffic and handle it there. Something really devious has to happen here though. First, let me describe how the internet works. Your ISP or internet service provider is the customer's local access to the internet. At your homes, the internet provider is typically supplied by your cable company like Chartered Spectrum or Comcast here in the US. The ISP then has to reach the rest of the internet, so they have to have a contract with some backbone provider to pass their traffic there. Backbone providers provide high speed connections, typically on fiber optic lines. Back in the old days, Bill Clinton used to refer to the backbone providers as the internet superhighway. So each city will typically have its cable companies and then you also have the phone carriers. Those then have to forward and receive traffic from into the main internet backbone. There aren't that many backbone providers. Some own portions of it and some control the entry points. Example of internet backbone providers are AT&T and Verizon. And then they can also contract with other providers to extend their network with companies like GTT, Level 3, and CenturyLink here in the US. Now here's the mystery. In order to globally block traffic on the upload in the USA, then a USA backbone provider will have to be the one doing the blocking. Meaning one of these providers in control of the entry point to the internet, typically called peering stations, has to be the one to have done the blocking. Or it could be done in concert with various internet exchange points where peering traffic is exchanged. But then this may require a concerted effort by multiple internet providers to do the attack simultaneously. Such a coordinated attack would only happen if a government mandated it. We are not aware of such a government order right now, so it would be easier to manage this great firewall if it is done by one company. This leaves us with the likelihood that this was coordinated by a big peering provider that controls the internet backbone, like AT&T or Verizon. Or a lesser possibility is a coordinated attack with their link partners, like GTT and CenturyLink. So who exactly controls these deep packet inspection routers? Or in other words, who controls the switch to the great firewall of the USA? And the next question is, why would an AT&T, Verizon, GTT, Level 3, or CenturyLink deliberately block VPNs this past week? Let me continue on to part two of the disruption of VPN traffic that occurred over this past weekend. Once again, it is easy to determine if VPN traffic is being singled out. It's because you turn the VPN off and there is a massive speed difference compared to it being on. 
Now, I understand the economic issues related to throttling, which is a little bit different than knee pack and inspection that I talked about earlier. Let me remind you of the net neutrality movement, which was supported heavily by MEGA-FT, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, MEGA-FT. The carriers wanted to stop the demand for net neutrality years ago during the beginning of the Trump administration because they wanted to make extra money from companies like Netflix. If Netflix paid extra, ISPs could prioritize the traffic from those video sources. This then, in theory, gives them a possibility of extra income. So downstream from the internet backbone to your local ISP like Charter Spectrum, their only realistic filtering capability is by identifying the source of the traffic and prioritizing traffic coming from a specific Netflix domain or Amazon domain or Hulu domain. Anyway, ISPs have limited ability to do throttling downstream. Due to the massive traffic being downloaded, any attempts at deep packet inspection will cause a complete bottleneck to occur. In my example earlier, it is easy to block a small amount of traffic going upstream to the backbone from a specific port. It is hard to examine traffic downstream because of the amount of traffic involved. Deep packet inspection is very CPU intensive and that's why it has limited use in large networks. Often it is used more in corporate networks and even they have to worry about creating a bottleneck in the network when they do this. So my conclusion is that it is not likely that a local ISP can do deep packet inspection from a practical level. That's why the backbone provider did it the way they did because only someone with control of uploads can perform it by watching the upload traffic. So this weekend, VPN traffic was slowed down again, but I think this is not deep packet inspection, but just throttling the internet by favoring other traffic sources. For example, favoring the feed off the Super Bowl or Netflix. And this showed up on our speed test as a slower download speed, but a normal upload speed. So this kind of selective throttling from the source should, in my guess, be the only feasible approach that can be taken by the ISP if they want to throttle. Maybe this throttling wasn't even VPN specific. However, we could see that it was affecting VPNs. However, the timing is extremely suspicious. Again, there are two separate parts to the throttling. The upload throttling during the week and then the download throttling over the weekend. First, the deep packet inspection specifically targeted encrypted services from VPNs. Tor was extra slow too, so maybe that was being targeted. Frankly, I was too busy to test it when, when it was happening, but usually Tor is on port 1950. Then a person commented on my video that their I2P traffic was being throttled as well. I don't know what port that is at the moment, but that's another encrypted platform. So was there a planned attack on encrypted networks, specifically from VPNs, Tor, and I2P? And I2P traffic is very small, so I'm even surprised that it would even be targeted. These encrypted channels would definitely be targets for disruption in China, Saudi Arabia, and other countries where free speech is not allowed. But in the USA, this is a first. I have a second fear. When they disrupted the VPN traffic, could they then record all the IP addresses of all the people in the USA using VPN, Tor, and I2P? Of course they could because the deep inspection can also isolate the source of the packet. The content may be encrypted, but this whole exercise could have been a way to gauge who's using VPNs, Tor, I2P in the US and get their IP addresses and count numbers. Was this the purpose of this event? Will they then use the excuse of national security to start blocking encrypted traffic so they can identify precisely who's talking to whom? Or could this data be used to put a big number of the population on a watch list so they can assume that these people have something to hide? This state of affairs is very concerning. I'm no conspiracy theorist, but if AT&T were responsible for throttling encrypted services, who would give them the authority for such a massive disruption? So I might assume that since they are a private business, they can do what they want. So I want to make sure I clearly understand this. MAGA-FT, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, can censor anything they want, and then another group of big corporate interests can selectively ban encrypted networks? Again, just coincidence? 
but why did the blocking of VPNs happen right after a new president takes office? Were there secret executive orders putting these into effect? Another fear is that this is a capability test, that this is some three-letter agency experimenting to test that they can block secret conversations inside the USA if they want to. What the heck is happening to the USA and why now? And here's the part that makes this sound like an extremely stupid attempt. Unless they really just want to identify the end users of encrypted networks. Any long-term blocking of VPN services or Tor on a fixed port will not work. There are various ways of obfuscating traffic so it does not look like VPN traffic. We can change ports all day. We can use HTTP proxy. We can use obfuscation proxy like OBS proxy, which is what people in China use to communicate with the rest of the world without them being identified as using a VPN. We can do relays. The traffic can be made to look like something else. But this is why this scares me because these big companies aren't stupid. They must know that blocking 1194 and 443 will cause VPN providers to spread out and switch to various sports and basically not pull in any particular area in the future. In my case, as a small VPN provider, I don't even have enough traffic to stand out if I use some obscure port number. So I think it's better to hang out with the small players like me since we will not have such a big traffic footprint. The effect of this disruption was that some of my VPN clients who did not have the patience to ask or even learn about these recent events canceled their subscriptions and blamed it all on me. I even had some people call me a fraud for having a VPN that was not working as it should. It was very depressing, of course, to hear that. So that is maddening in itself that some third party, perhaps at the behest of a secret government program, decided to do something to hurt my business. I have servers that only I have access to and are not published. When I did my testing, I could duplicate the same issues on every single server, whether it was a publicly known server, a test server, and in any city in the USA. Let me tell you some other detail about internet peering stations. The way the internet works, each local ISP, like a cable company, forwards their traffic to the backbone network. The one that's present in most cases is the AT&T peering stations. They were at one point located at eight cities all over the USA. It is through these peering stations that a three-letter agency is able to watch what you say on the internet. This was discussed in detail in a Guardian article from five years back or so. The traffic from the internet is received by deep packet inspection devices on AT&T and then based on a keyword search, they would pass the traffic to the Utah data center, which of course is the three letter agency facility. The algorithm was included in the Guardian article and then someone provided me with a keyword list later on. So AT&T was already equipped with deep packet inspection devices, but in the past, this was only used for passive listening. Could they be expanding their reach and adding firewall capabilities? Friends, this is such a big deal. This shows how vulnerable we are. At any point in time, someone can turn on a switch that basically makes part of the internet disappear. Is this decided on by a president, by someone in deep state? Is it delegated to some three-letter agency or is it completely under the control of AT&T, Verizon, GTT, Level 3, CenturyLink, and others? I wasn't actively speaking out for net neutrality at the time of the debates on this. This was because I thought that it would be foolhardy for any ISP to do internet filtering since they would be subject to a great backlash. But folks, where is this backlash? No one said a word. Where are the committees in Congress talking about serious issues like this? Well, they're distracted. They have other issues to think about, apparently. This is clearly a misuse of the internet in an extremely serious way and I want to know who had the power to control this and flip the switch. And since the internet infrastructure is far from end users, we really have no control beyond our ISP. We have no say. There are such big questions here and my immediate response is anger and helplessness. Unless the population speaks out in concern over this, it would affect even the big Mega FT players, Microsoft, Apple, Google, Amazon, Facebook, Twitter, because it means someone can throttle them too. It's like a hidden power play that we haven't seen the last of yet. 
As of the time when I did this video, the throttling stopped and I see no activity. This may have happened before and maybe the rest of the techies just attributed this to normal network issues and forgot all about it. But now that I know what is happening, the next time I see any drop in upload speed, I will immediately think deep packet inspection in action and I can conduct tests to verify. Again, let me tell you the marker so you can keep an eye on it. Huge drops in upload speed may imply deep packet inspection. Drops in download speed imply a more general throttling at the ISP local side. As I mentioned at the beginning, I am a VPN service provider and my users are specifically affected by this. This is not unique to my VPN. It just so happened that I was using port 1194 before. And many VPN providers may seem unaffected because they were not on 1194 or 443. Now, I would imagine that no VPN provider would ever be at 1194 again. So from here on, it will be just be luck of the draw to get targeted. Please do not abandon me in this fight. I'm providing these services for our privacy. Some of you have just canceled subscriptions without a thought. I wish you would continue to support us because we need the resources to come up with alternate solutions if someone tries to break us. Also, please share this video and subscribe to this channel. This is a very important topic. Thank you for your support and see you next time.